It is time once again for the weekly closes on the Bitcoin miners. Let's see where our favorite miners have landed this week. Before we get going, take a look at the Trade Cave store over on Etsy. We've got four t-shirts available right now. Two dragons, the Trade Cave logo, and Sir Doge, Lord of Maximum Coinage, is available there now. Uh, go ahead and the link is in the description as well as on our channel page. Have a look at this. We will be adding more to it as we go. Let's get into the charts. So first of all, we're going to take a look at BitFarms. Uh, BitFarms was able to hold over 230 all week long. We closed the week at 240. The only thing I don't like about this candle is the wick on top there. We went into the 200 week. SMA wicked slightly above it and came back down. I don't like that. I also don't like how the midline for the Fib Bollingers is up here at 270, just waiting to swat us down once we do get above the 200 week SMA. And the last two rallies, the one from December as well as in February, March, just peaked at their heads above this midline for the Fib Bollingers and then quickly plunged back beneath it. Are we going to see that again this summer? It does look like we are set up to continue to go up the, the R size in bullish territory at 62, not overbought yet. The weekly volume is pointing the correct direction and flipped green as of last week and is continuing to look like it's ready to charge up further after this week's movement. So. It's very possible we could see this. This is a very bullish movement. We closed above the 20 week. We just need to conquer the 200 week and then the mid line for the Fib 200 Bollinger Band um, on this thing. And once we get above that, if we can conquer this thing and successfully close above it, if you notice the last two runs, we didn't really get a clean break of it. Only on February 20th did we have technically a clean break of this Fib Bollinger midline but it quickly came back beneath it. The previous one never broke above it. The, this was a clean break, but it came right back down. So that was like a fake out breakout. Can we get that this time around? Can we get a solid break above this of over 270 and into higher territories on Bit Farms? I don't know. It's going to be very interesting. Uh, also note that this week, Riot purchased more Bit Farms. They're up to over 12% of the Bit Farms uh, free float now. So they've got 12% of the company. Is this good for Bit Farms? What do you think? Uh, is it good for Bit Farms? Is it better for Riot? Uh, personally, I think it's better for Riot. Their performance has been worse than Bit Farms for a while now. Uh, they've been pretty stagnant, and Bit Farms has kind of been, you know, having nice big waves. Uh, so, and they are comparable in terms of size in relation to how much operational um, exohash they have going at any time. Like Riot has up to 12, but they're only ever running about seven, eight, where Bitfarms is running seven and a half and will have over nine, nine and a half exohash here very, very, very soon. It is energized and ready to go. They just need to run some maintenance and get it caching. Uh, and at that point, they'll actually be, have a larger running operation than what Riot has. Uh, so that's pretty exceptional for BitFarms itself as a company. And I think the last couple of weeks of movement uh, all the way since May 13th have been pretty bullish, reflecting uh, that knowledge that this company actually has a lot to offer. Uh, so let's we're looking for next week. Next week, I want to see. Wow. Next week, I'd like to see it conquer the 200 week moving average. I want to see it over 250. Right now, if we turn off the drawings, and off these. All right, you can see that this week we are we closed above all these red bodies back here. We just have these big ones from the big big drop off from that big run up from these tweezers here. Uh, I would like to see next week get over 250. Over 250. I'd like to see the week after that get us over 266, 267. We re once we clear 266, 67, and if we can hold it, like 270 is going to be a struggle, right? Uh, but once we get above that 266 and 270 range, there's really nothing in our way. And we're really just going to run. We're going to see some big candles, maybe some 30% weeks in front of us for Bit Farms. Uh, let's take a look at Riot. How is Riot doing this week? It was down 0.21% this week. The volume is pointing the wrong direction on the weekly. The RSI is in bear territory for Riot. Riot's not doing so hot right now. It is consolidating in a big way. This is a bit of a falling wedge, maybe. It's an ugly one, but if, if it is one uh, on the weekly for Riot, uh, it's a little bit worse than this base back here in October. The price range is very, very similar, and we've seen it uh, on one, two, three times now coming down to this area 
around uh, just beneath $10 and rocketing up from just beneath $10 in about three to six weeks, uh, rocketing up to from, uh, you know, under 10 to $20.60 to $18.70, as well as to $18.37. Will we make it to $18.33 this time? Will we go back up to 20 this time? Notice though, Notice that the highs have been getting lower since July of last year. The highs have been getting lower. So we've been getting more compression in the price action here. Kind of just comes up to the midline of the Fib Bollinger here, which is this purple pink thing, and then comes crashing back down to the 50, the 20 or the 50 weekly from there. So at this point, I wouldn't like if I'm I do have some riot calls for January 2025 as well as January 2026. I plan to get out of at least the 2025 calls as soon as price touches this purple line here, which right now is at $17.82. I plan on dumping those immediately when it touches that, unless it flies right past it. I might, le I might let it see if it goes past it for like a few hours, um, but if it starts coming back down to this 200, if it comes and touches this purple line and goes back beneath the red line here, which is the 200 MS SMA, which is currently at $16.43, so if it goes past 16.43 and then comes back beneath 16.43, I'm dumping immediately everything. I'm going to get rid of my 2026 calls. I'm going to get rid of my 2025 calls. And I'm just going to be like, that's it. I'm done. <laughs> now, of course, this is not financial advice and not a suggestion to buy, sell, or hold any asset whatsoever. That is just my plan. And that is my plan because if you look at the last three runs, every single time, price from for riot went above the 200 week sma and then came back beneath it it dumped hard and i don't expect this time to be any different if that happens again so if it goes over the 200 week and then comes back beneath i am done i am running and waiting for it to base back down around nine dollars if that happens that's that is my game plan with riot now if it gets above this purple line here at 1788 and holds if it gets above that and holds i'm looking for a run up to about 26 dollars on riot that is completely reasonable uh, based on this pre previous price action, based on where the, the Fibs, the Fib Bollingers are landing. Um, yeah, if we get above that and hold above that 1788, 1790 range, uh, we're very easily, we could go up into the mid to high 20s on right if that happens. But if it comes back down beneath 1640, 40 something, 30 something here, wherever this red line is, uh, the, the 200 SMA, if it gets back beneath the 200 week SMA, I'd be looking forward to come back to $9. So I would immediately just eject myself from those positions. All right, let's take a look at Mara. How did Mara do this week down 7.36%? That is pretty upsetting. All the calls I had on Mara are down. I had one that was up $100 still today. So I sold that, uh, took my $100 profit, and then all the other ones are <laughs> negative. So I'll be sitting on those for a little while here. Uh, I'm not too concerned about this actually this is still in a downtrend right here we got back into it let me turn on my drawings yeah all right we do have a bit of a rising wedge that concerns me if we break this line here i'd be looking for this to come back down to the 200 week sma which is at 16 dollars and 66 cents so if we break this trend line 1666 is likely where we're going but but we do have some hope here. So the 50 week SMA, which is this orange line and the middle line for the Fib Bollinger, which is this purple pinkish thingy, uh, it stopped right on both of those. It stopped right on both of those. It's done that before. It's done that before once, twice. This is the third time. Okay. Now, sometimes third tap is the charm. It breaks through things. Sometimes uh, that is further confirmation of support or resistance. In this case, we bounced off of it. If we can stay above $19. So $19 is where we must stay above. If we can stay above $19, I think this is going to hold. And I think that this whole area right here is going to be a uh, liquidity that we will use to launch ourselves up to the top of the range here again of this, of this area here, which is about $22.78. So if we hold above $19 next week, I'd be looking for a very swift reversal in the later half of June, taking us up to about $22.74. Now, if $19 breaks, $16.66 is where I'm looking at uh, next. And I'll be pretty upset about that. <laughs>
So I would like to sell my calls. That would be great. All right, let's move on to CleanSpark. CleanSpark has been getting so, so concentrated between $18 and $15. We came back down towards the $15 level again. We closed down at $15.58 on Friday. We are down, we went as low as $15.34 on uh, the week. So that sucks. I'm not really enjoying that. Uh, the, uh, the RSI has been just hanging out about 50 since April. Since the beginning of April, the RSI has barely budged off of 50. It went as high as 62 and then 657 for a while, and it has been getting weaker and weaker. Now, if the next time price comes up to this yellow line on the RSI, which is currently at 57.58 and does not break above it, I'm going to be pretty distraught about that, to be honest. That's going to upset me a lot. I'm not going to like it. The, the, the volume's going the wrong direction. Now, is this the ATM at work? Is this them issuing shares diluting us? Is that what's happening? Is that what's at work here? It could be. I kind of hope that's what's going on and not something else. Um, I hope they're kind of just diluting shares. Of, you know, it gets up to 18, they dilute it back down to 15. It gets up to 18, they dilute it back down to 15 until they're out. And then by the, when they're out of ATM, then it's just pure price action roaring up because it does stop right at 15. Even though the SMA, the 20 week SMA is now above that level. The five is way above that level. Um, there's no real reason for us to continue to keep stopping at 15. We just do like right at 15, stop right at 15, stop. This feels orchestrated at this point, uh, going from 18 to 15 feels like an orchestrated move at this point. And I think when we do finally break above 18, I think that's when we'll know whatever is waterboarding us down beneath $18 on clean spark is over and we can move up way, way higher, maybe into the high twenties, low thirties perhaps once this is done. And I really hope it's done in the next couple of weeks. And I'd like to see in the next two weeks, I really want to see 18 get conquered in the next two weeks. That would just make my day. I would feel so good about that. Let's take a look at the fibs here. Uh, yeah, there's no reason for us to stop here. Let's see, is there like another, is there a like two, three, six there? Kind of, I guess. Not really. No, there's really no rhyme or reason for it. It's just 15 seems to be where it wants to stop. Whatever is pushing it down likes $15 for some reason. Okay. Uh, yeah, we get above 18. We're very quickly going to come up to 20. That's where the, 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 um, 382 fib is. And then the next fib Bollinger band is up at 2553, which is the 618 where we will likely, where we have stopped twice before in, uh, February, as well as in March, we stopped at the six, uh, the 618 fib Bollinger before crashing back down off of these blow off tops. Um, I do expect that to be where we probably hit. Uh, we might break through that this time, though, and like come all the way up to this red one, which is all the way up here at $34. That would be super, super cool. Do a move like what Mara did back in March where it ran up into the 30s. That would be pretty amazing. I'd like to see that on CleanSpark. We are still in this big kind of like larger cup motion here. We have not broken that cup and handle yet. We are still forming the handle right over here. You can see the big cup swoop down, handles forming here. Once we get above $18. Once we get above $18, the fireworks start. And the stop, the end of the move on this cup and handle, honestly, is up at around $40. So we could see that. That would be like ultimate perfection of the cup and handle. I wouldn't be too surprised if we stopped somewhere like in the low to mid 30s, though. Uh, so that's what's going on with CleanSpark. Let's take a look at Bit Digital. Bit Digital was up 5.24% this week. This does look a little bit like a blow off top candle. Right here, I think this is very similar to BitFarms. It's a little bit similar to BitFarms. Anyways, we went up to the 50-week uh, SMA, got rejected back down to the 20-week SMA, where we bounced back up and came back up into the middle between the 20 and the 50-week SMAs at 261. We really need to get over, uh, you know, 278. Uh, realistically, over three dollars is where we really need to see. But things that are interesting that I do like about this chart is that we are in bullish territory on the RSI at 5796 right now. Okay. Our volume oscillator has flipped green as of two weeks ago, and it is pointing in the right direction still. It is still kind of going up at an aggressive angle. I like seeing that as well. The other thing I like seeing with those two things being true is that we have a Bollinger Band Keltner channel squeeze going on off at the top here. And when we break through that, when that breaks out, since we've been held down for such a long time, It'll look similar to like, I don't know, back here in uh, April of 2023, where we broke out of a long standing Bollinger Band Keltner channel squeeze. Now, this one was a lot longer, but we broke out of it. We were also at a much lower price. And look where we moved. We moved from a bottom of, well, a bottom bottom of uh, 52 cents. But let's let's take a look off of this little handle here. This is, uh, we from March, from the spring time, which is where we just came out of, we moved from a, just under a dollar to over 
almost five dollars now uh, we did not have that squeeze in this move here where we came down to the prices we're at currently and we moved from 198 all the way up to 527. this time we got that squeeze going on and we came down to the same price levels just under two dollars uh, I think we might be, we might have a shot at taking out the 200 week moving average on BitDigital in the coming blowout here. That could very likely happen soon after the, the Ethereum ETFs come out, which also coincides with summer if they come out soon. That would be pretty amazing. Um, but I would be pretty nervous here at the 200 week SMA at $5.23 right now because the last two times we had a run, we stopped, the first time we stopped below it. And then the second time we stopped just at it and then came back down. Um, now, but this is a higher high kind of pattern here. And if we get higher, even higher this time, it would stand to reason that we would break the 200 week moving average. And if we break the 200 week moving average, the next level for us would be about $7.75, which would be pretty awesome. I would have to say going from under $2 to over $7, that'd be pretty, just absolutely amazing for Bit Digital. Let's move on to Iron. Iron had an amazing week. It was a really good week. We broke out of this Bollinger Band Keltner channel squeeze that you can see at the top from Iron that we had last week with this little doji candle. We broke out of it like crazy. And this is the kind of thing I want to see on Bit Digital. It's got kind of a several week, several month, honestly. Um, Bollinger Band Keltner channel squeeze followed by a big old breakout candle. That is awesome. That is the kind of thing I want to see. Does the FIBS have anything for Iron? No, hasn't been around long. So now, really, the only thing in the way for IREN right now, because we're, we're, just, we're just blowing through everything right now. There's nothing in our way right now until we get all the way up here to, and if you, you can see it on the left over here, all the way up to about $13.40. That is the next area where we're going to really hit some resistance. If we don't turn around here, we could turn around where we currently are. We got all the way up to almost here, the bottom of this thing, which was, you know, we got up to about eleven fifty one at one point, which is crazy because... Consider four weeks ago, we were down at 423 with Iron, and this thing just rocketed off. Uh, I would want to see it, and I can turn this off because it's not a trend line. There's only one candle. Uh, I would want to see this come back to the five. Honestly, I don't want to see it come back to the five. The five is at $7.14 right now. Uh, by the time it gets back to the five, it'll probably be somewhere closer to like $8.50. I'd want to see that happen. Bare minimum, I'd want to see it come back down to $8.73 and tap the top of, uh, yeah, about $8.73 and top the tap the top of the candle from February 12th, as well as Feb uh, December 18th. I want to see it at least come back and tap those before continuing on. Otherwise, like it's just a runaway train and I'm not chasing it. I want to see it come back to some reasonable levels and then go off on it. If you're in this right now, awesome. I would put a trailing stop loss on this probably. If I were still in this with a 35% week, I'd have like maybe a 10 or 12% um, trailing stop loss on this thing and if it went from where it currently is 12 percent would take us right back down to 923 yeah but if it comes back down to 923 i would absolutely expect it to come back down to that like 870 range which would be about 17 maybe 18 or 20 percent um from the top of this thing uh from where it currently is if it's from the top what's what's a 20 percent pull up down from the top 20 percent from the top is 930 um, regularly with Bitcoin mining stocks, you can see a 25, 30% drop, no problem off of these things when they do a big run like this. So uh, I'd be looking for something like that right now. Uh, we might see one more week. We might actually see one more week of it going up a little bit before curling back down again. Uh, and that's why I'd say I'd probably do a trailing stop on this thing, uh, personally. Uh, of course, it's not financial advice, not a suggestion to buy, sell, or hold any asset whatsoever. I would look at the RSIs though. The last two times we got into overbought territory on the RSI, we had a big drop. There was one here on July 2023 where we dropped uh, from July until November, we dropped uh, 64%. All right. And then we had from the other overbought condition that we had was in December 18th, and we dropped from we dropped until January, so about a month, and we dropped 60%. Okay, now we just got overbought again. When we start to see volume curl over and RSI come down, we can see between a, like, what was it? A 50 and 60% drop. Let's see, 64. I was talking too much. I wasn't really paying attention to what I was saying. 64, yeah, about 64 each time. We'd see a 64 from the top. What would 64 from the top be? 64 from the top would take us all the way back down to $4. That would be somewhere I'd be looking around like September or October for it to be back down around the $4 range and then scoop right back up and rock it up way, way higher than it had ever been before from there. Now, do I really think it'll get all the way down to $4? Probably not. 
It'll probably at the most get down to like seven, six bucks. I wouldn't think four. Four is crazy. But you know, that doesn't mean it can't. It totally could. I might be wrong about that. It does look like a megaphone right now. Um, but that's all for Iron. It's it's going crazy. Congratulations if you're in it. It's doing really, really well. But not as well as Core Scientific. Core Scientific is up 63.79% this week. That is crazy. I'm not touching this thing. It is, it is off the charts. Um, yeah, it's nuts. I would want to see this thing. I mean, the five week is all the way down at $4.70. It's currently trading at $7.78. That's, that's absolutely insane. Back here in April 15th, just two months ago, it was trading at $2.62 and now it's at $7.87. That is an insane rally. Uh, uh, if you're not taking profits off of this, I would question your sanity. That is nuts. Uh, now, to get in, to get back into this thing. Now, it could keep going. I have no idea where it'll go. It, it could go. It's in price discovery mode right now. No clue where this thing is going. None whatsoever. Uh, but if I were looking for a pullback, I'd be looking for it to come back to the top of this candle here from January at six at about six dollars right about six dollars six dollars and ten cents i'd be looking for it to come back to that and that's where i would consider entering and if you know me you know white lines equal entries i'd be looking for an entry around there uh i don't need this green one Oop. yeah that's where i'd be looking if it never gets there then i'm probably not going to get in um and that's that and i'll just have to accept that this one i don't need that what's this all the way down here what is that? Oh, that's a that's a 20 week all the way down three dollars and eighty cents. Uh, this I don't need. The only two, the only line I need on this right now is that white line. Honestly, that white line and maybe maybe this one right there. Somewhere in this range, I would pick it up <laughs> between six eleven and four sixteen. Right now, it's a runaway train. Congratulations if you're in this thing. You're doing awesome. You're you're just taking home so much profit right now. That is just absolutely beautiful. And I hope that you are getting some of that profit and capturing it and protecting it. Uh, so that is all I've got for you today. That is the weekly closes. So many of them are bullish. A few of them are bearish. A few of them are super confusing. <laughs> uh, I hope you enjoyed that. Um, please check out the Etsy shop for Trade Cave. See if there's anything you like on there. Keep an eye on it as more products will be rolling out there. And with that said, please like, comment, and subscribe and have a profitable day.